You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time to dance, time to commence our broadcast week here. Not just for the old OB, but for everything we do here on the old Options Insider Radio Network. Remember, all those shows are available on just about every on-demand platform under the sun. I know that's how a lot of you like to consume it. If you do consume it on demand, all we ask is that, hey, if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing either the show or the network, whatever, whichever way you get the program. So that more people can continue to discover and enjoy what you've been enjoying for all of this time. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond, enjoy it even more. Engage live, not just with me, but with all the guests and hosts we have on throughout the week. Got a great pro Q&A coming up tomorrow. Mr. Scott Nations returning to the hot seat. He's one of our many hot seat Q&A guests who really loved it and loves it and is always asking to come back. So he does love answering your question. Nice guys. Also got a new book coming out. So get those questions in about all things volatility tomorrow for Mr. Scott. If you want to enjoy and join those great pro Q&As as well as options oddities every Friday, all the giveaways, all the live stuff throughout the week, theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. Remember, just me and you talking here. Don't tell anybody about that. That's a secret offer, secret deal, secret entrance code just for you. All right. And of course, however you listen live after the fact, we do appreciate your questions, your comments, playing along in our polls, our questions of the week. We got a fun one up there right now. I hope the Viceroy doesn't see it. He may have some opinions on the one from this week. That is how we know what the heck you guys are into. So keep engaging, keep sending in those questions. We do love to hear from all of you folks. And before we hear from who we're hearing from today, by the way, we will be joined post haste by the unclest of Mike's from St. Charles Wealth Management and the rockingest of lobster, lobsters. Easy for me to say, the rockingest of lobsters. From the option pits. So an early welcome to both of you gentlemen, because now we have to dive in and kick off things the way we like to do. It is time. Usually this is where we guess that 80s wrestler. Last week, we kind of did a little bit of a segue outside of the 80s into the early 90s. That person, of course, was Razor Ramon, who who passed away tragically last week, but he debuted in 92. We made an exception for him for I know a lot of people of that era hold fond memories of him this week. Because we are joined by the Rock Lobster and not the Meatball, I know he has a hard time with some of the 80s wrestling things. So I want to make it a little bit competitive this week as well. So we're going to keep it 80s wrestling related. <laughs> Everyone thinks of, when they think of stars from the wrestling world transitioning to Hollywood, they think of The Rock, maybe John Cena now, all those guys. But they forget that back in the 80s, there was one superstar who did it all first. He tried to be The Rock before there was The Rock. And he pretty much, I think, made one movie. (laughs) And it was, to put it mildly, not good. But there is one line of dialogue from said movie 
That is the stuff of legends. You could argue. I don't think it's even arguable. I think it's just fact. This is the greatest line of dialogue ever uttered by a WWE superstar, certainly in the realm of Hollywood. So for this week, you get to name the movie after you hear this awesome scene and hear this awesome line of dialogue. And then bonus points if you can name the actor who, oh, excuse me, the wrestler who tried to become the first rock. And unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, maybe after you hear the scene, we'll see. It did not work out so well. All right, here we go. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble. And then a, a litany of shooting commences. <laughs> so there you go. One of, if not the greatest lines of dialogue ever uttered by a WWF superstar in a Hollywood film. I shall now open up the floodgates to guessing when I say three, two, one, go. You, they will both buzz in and see who can name this film and for bonus points, the wrestler who uttered such a memorable line. Three, two, one, go. Buzz. Oh. Uncle Mike, way ahead of the game there. (laughs) 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 Mr. Rock Lobster, could you not hear it? Uh, I heard it right at the end. Uh, What did the guy say? He Uh, said, I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I am all out of gum. And then the uh, the ass kicking commenced. Right. Yeah, I I think I missed that one. (laughs) Okay. Well, I wanted to give you a chance. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, can you name this? legendary piece of cinematic dialogue from the film. Uh, can you name the film and also the wrestler, sir? I can't name the film, but the wrestler is Rowdy Piper. You are correct, sir. That is Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Everyone forgets that he was going to be The Rock before The Rock became The Rock, and he left WWE with much fanfare to do just that. And he came out with this film. I think this film was 88, I think, maybe 86, somewhere in that time frame. And it is called They Live. It is not exactly a memorable film outside of that one line of dialogue. It's effectively, it shows you how memorable it is. I've never even seen it. I've just seen that scene. <laughs> I was a little too young for it when it came out. I think it was pretty R. But yeah, it was uh, all just, he could put on sunglasses and spot aliens. It was like an alien infestation. And so he was going into a bank in that scene and he had his sunglasses on and he was looking at all the aliens and he proceeded to shoot them all with his shotgun. But he came to chew bubble gum. And kick ass. I think it's great. He doesn't even have any gum in that scene. There's no gum. <laughs> so it's just it's just a great line of dialogue as we keep on rolling right on into a perhaps even equally great trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down what the heck is trading. And today, yet another day, another argument for why we don't really and we really can't prepare for the show too far ahead of time. <laughs> you know, try to prepare, I don't know, a few days at a time, even a few hours at a time. And, you know, the markets will always throw you a curveball and you have to throw it all away. So that's a, today is another good day because we were looking kind of mixed not that long before the show. And then now as we're kicking off the show. We are looking firmly back to the dark side. The NASDAQ leading the charge to the dark side once again, as is want to do, off almost one and a quarter percent. Uh, the S&P off about two thirds of a percent and the Dow flirting with one percent to the dark side. All this means that VIX and volatility products were coming off. They are starting to gain some of that luster back now. As the show has commenced, VIX was right around a 23 handle, not not long before showtime. When we kicked off the show, it had ticked back up to about a 23.75. That puts it a little bit down, a little over two points, about 2.15 points from our show on Thursday. VIX was at about a 107 when we kicked things off. That's down about six points, but I'm sure if we re-racked that now, probably be higher as well. Uh, VXX was at a 24 and three quarters. Remember, this is a product, or should be a product that's had many problems of late, still managing to get two points off. Down about exactly, actually, two points from Thursday's show. UBXY, same deal, was at about a 14 and a half when we kicked off the show. That's down two points. And, of course, now we run it again. up about It's up to 15 and a half, so it has gained a point back. So things are looking frothy out there as we speak. You know, I think it was all that Roddy Piper got the markets a little energized. And certainly the vol markets energized. 
Uh, coming into the show, we are seeing Val Q was at about, oh, 27 and a quarter. That puts it down about seven, almost eight points, about seven and three quarters points from this time last week. And as the day has ticked up, Val Q actually is still down. I was about down more now, down to about 26. So down actually about another point and a quarter. So Val Q continues its trend to the dark side while the rest of the Val market maybe seems like it's firming up a little bit. Uncle Mike, sir, you got the name of the movie correct. I'm sorry, you got the name of the wrestler correct. So I'll give you I'll give you half points. But it's enough for the opening slot here today, Mr. Uncle Mike. So what is catching your eye on a day that was looking maybe kind of Uncle Mikey and now not so much, sir? Got it. Well, it's funny that with with um, where you were going with your lead into the movie. I thought for sure it was going to be Jesse the Body Ventura and the Predator saying, I don't got time to bleed. Oh, you know what? Uh, that is a good one too. You're right. I ain't got time to bleed. Jesse the Body See, had a, had a got that one. He had a I good oeuvre. He had a good run there with with uh, Arnold because he had that. He had Running Man. He was in a few of them that were really pretty good. So you know what? I may have to. Okay, it's up there. I'll say it's up there. That line with all the best because that that's a good one from Jesse the Body too. I say that all the time. My kids are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like I ain't got time <laughs> to bleed. So yes, uh, go ahead, sir. Have at. Got it. Yeah, Rowdy Piper was better off as a wrestler than he was as an actor, no doubt about it. But uh, many fond memories of Rowdy Roddy Piper, but uh, we can talk about that another day. Uh, you know, In terms of these markets, uh, the market's trimming a little bit from its rally that it had last week. I mean, we moved a ton last week, and uh, I we really had a lot of movement to the upside. Uh, VIX came down quite a bit. And, um with a movement to the upside as well. Uh, we were uh, in the 30s in the VIX, and then uh, coming into today, uh, we even got as low as 22.99 for a short stint of the day to day. Uh, so it's up again today. Uh, and then, of course, the market's pulling back a little bit today. But I think that uh, I, I know some of the the talk seems to be: Did the Fed get it right? Are we going to raise rates more, or whatever the case may be? But I honestly believe that if we're just down 30 points in the S&P like we are, uh, I think it's just kind of pulling back a little bit from just the massive rally that we had last week. And that's something uh, that I think just kind of is par for the course. What I am seeing right now that's not pleasant to look at is the 10-year note coming down like it is selling off. Um, it's kind of one of those things to where I'm, I'm happy I'm a, I'm a covered call seller on it uh, instead of just holding our bond holdings for our clients. But uh, bonds are not pretty right now. So that's another thing with which I'm seeing at this point in time. Uh, but uh, the beauty of options is that uh, there's always ways with which to uh, mitigate risk and uh, do what you need to do, which is uh, what I'll be doing a lot of today, it looks like on here. Um, just being a longer term 10 year note bond holder. Um, happy that we got some calls on it with volatility being higher, uh, implied volatility being higher in the options. It has definitely uh, eased the sting of what's happened in the bond world so far this year. So, looking at that today, uh, also we do have a little bit of an uptick in silver on the day. And then, of course, I think the real big story of today. Uh, is that slippery stuff, oil. Oil's up 5% on the day-to-day. -day. Again, up back up to 108 a barrel. Uh, there's definitely buyers. And I think just last week, uh, we got a little bit complacent uh, with oil coming off like it has. But uh, it's uh, not coming off today. There's definitely many buyers coming around in the oil field at this point. So we have that to look at. Uh, also, uh, the one bright spot or one of the uh, the one uh, sector that is higher on the day to day. Uh, well, I mean, I guess if you want to count uh, a couple of the one major sector that's higher on the day to day is energy. XLE is up close to 3% on the day to day. So we have that. And uh, I just think that we're st continuing to adjust to what's happening in the Ukraine right now and to where we're going to be with things. And uh, I really don't see oil coming down significantly anytime soon. Uh, of course, it can go up and down 5 to 10% a day, uh, but coming back down to the $50, $60 a barrel level or that area, I think we're going to be up for a while with that. So a lot happening right now, and I think that this, along with just anything else, uh, continue to manage risk, folks, and that's what I'm seeing. And you know what else you're going to be seeing or perhaps hearing in a couple of seconds, Mr. Uncle Mike, is a little, a little extra bonus for you. Here we go. You're hit. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. 
<laughs> Love it. Okay. There we go. All right, that's better. Now, you can't put that in my head and not have me at least play it once here on the show. All right, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, do you at least know that line of dialogue? Hopefully you do from another infamous 80s film. Per- probably a lot more infamous, a.k.a. Predator. And then B, outside of that uh, fantastic line of dialogue from one Jesse the Body, former governor of the state to the north there in Minnesota. Outside of that, what is catching your eye in a day where vol and the markets are all topsy-turvy, sir? I have to say, I think Predator is one of my all-time favorite Ernie movies. It's a good one. It's a pretty it's darn good one. definitely up there. I, and I personally think just Jesse's, Jesse's spot in that movie got him the governorship of Minnesota. They figured... If that guy's not afraid of the uh, predator, he'd probably make a good governor. <laughs> he ain't got time to bleed. What better qualification for a governor do you need? Yes, yes. There was that was there was a lot of good ones. Uh, actually, actually, that was a movie just of one-liners, as I recall. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> the rest of them we can't repeat on this show. Yeah, yes, it's uh, yes, not exactly yes. a family-friendly movie, but a great one nonetheless. Yes, yeah, definitely not family friendly. And then you had the the Carl Weathers, Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of, you know, studly dude. Uh, I don't know the head, the head to head, so to speak. There was enough testosterone in that movie to fill like five other movies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I, you know what? I can't even see him making a movie like that today. This, no, no, it would. All it would, those guys are so old now. You know. Well, first off, like, yes. Nobody, no actor has that kind of, you know, puts by anybody. There's not enough steroids to make a movie like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Um, I, I have to say, we do have, uh, I am looking at uh, Ball today. And the Fed kind of comes out and says, hey, you know, um, we are, we are going to be really aggressive moving rates. Um now it, it's gone from transitory inflation to it's just way too high. Wouldn't you so, argue that last week was the time to make such a pronouncement? Why a week later? What are we doing here? Uh, you know, I, I think they're like, okay, we'll see how, how people or how things react. I, that might have been my guess. I'm just guessing okay, because I'm not the Fed guy. However, maybe the Fed guy went to go buy groceries this week because I'm assuming that he pretty much doesn't buy any groceries for himself. So he goes to buy groceries. The manservant went out to buy the groceries this week, sir. Correct. And the manservant said, OFED chairman, groceries are way too expensive. Your Wheaties are up 40% since last year, sir. So I think that might have, that might have, uh, you know, who, who knows, really, um, uh, what, what, what changed things. Uh, and that's, you know, the Fed always, uh, gives themselves enough room to change their mind or, or be more aggressive. But I thought, you know, we had a pretty good sell-off in ball the last few days of last week. It was, it was intense, right? Like we went basically from, you know, the mid thirties, the low thirties at the beginning of the week to the, like to 23. So we were out of the danger zone for a while. Um, and right now, as I look at it, um, you know, ball is, uh, VIX is selling off or jumping a little bit. And it's more of, uh, you know, but the market really isn't doing much. Uh, now, you know, and they do this like the knee-jerk thing. Oh, rates are going higher, so tech stocks aren't going to do well, and growth stocks are going to suffer and all that kind of stuff, um, which I don't believe, <laughs> to be honest, in the long run. Uh, I think stocks that make money or companies that grow still grow. But anyway, at least for today, things are uh, sad. Ball's a little higher. There's there's no uh, the ukraine negotiations are kind of slumped down um and uh and i and i think another thing too is uh potentially you know uh, with the us kind of freezing some reserves for the russians and then like other other countries are like well maybe we could get our, our reserves frozen so i i don't know there might be a case for maybe also raising rates uh, to make the dollar look a little better, a little stronger dollar policy. It's probably long overdue in general, I think. Um, and it could be, it could be that too. So I think there's, there is some, there is some geopolitics, uh, uh, intertwined in all of this stuff. So, um, you know, but real in reality, SPX is down, uh, three quarters of a, you know, 75 basis points, not even down 1%. Although it was up a little bit this morning, but not much. 
uh, you know, and VIX is basically, it's up about a point. So I, I still think from a vol point of view, everything is pretty fairish until something changes. Uh, you still have pretty drastic intraday moves. Um, so I don't think a 25 VIX is even, is even a, a unrealistic at this point, to be quite honest. So uh, as we look around, I think there's, you can still do some bargain hunting. Um, I do think this Ukraine crisis at this point will, uh, it probably as the negotiations get closer, things will probably get more ugly as in, you know, maybe the Russians just shell things more and just be, you know, not nice, I guess <laughs> you could say, uh, until they, whatever objective they have in mind. Um, and then right now, then that's what we have. So it's kind of a, you know, after a day of what we, last week, were we 4,200 SPX? I think we had a 200 point SPX rally last week, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like it was fairly large. Um, yep, it was. Yeah. So we were, <laughs> I think we started the 15th or 16th. Uh, the low was 41.92 and we rallied 200 points. So. Not quite 5%, but a fairly good rally from the bottom. So I think as far as, okay, the Fed saying what they needed to to sort of stabilize things, I think they did their job. And at this point, uh, we're sitting on, you know, we're we're just sitting on this, this Ukraine thing to see how things uh, work out. But, you know, unless something gets drastically worse, it feels like all these, you know, disruptions haven't really hit yet like supply chain this and you know russian ex exports that except for that lme debacle um with nickel uh this is a uh, um it is a you know it's just kind of a ho-hum day at a at a 25 vix that's it um but it's hard it's it's hard to maintain this uh danger zone market at this point we kind of hit a low. We haven't really retest, you know, we re kind of retested it. And uh, so, I don't know. I, it's kind of, it feels like a little bit ambivalent. Vol is fairly priced. And now we're just kind of ho-hum waiting around. And that's kind of what I see. Um, not super exciting, but um, then again, not normal by any stretch either. Ah, yes. Another ho-hum day above 25 in the VIX. By the way, Mr. Uncle Mike, I love our chat. They're pointing out to me, I did not know this, that Jesse the Body wrote a book called I Ain't Got Time to Bleed. So he clearly has embraced that line of dialogue as his own personal mantra as well, Mr. Uncle Mike. Yeah, I remember that book when it came out a few years back. There you go. That's one, there's two books on Uncle Mike's bookshelf. One is his book, Go Long, and the other one is the Jesse the Body autobiography. So check it out. A, a double, doubly stacked bookshelf <laughs> behind Uncle Mike. Let's see if the markets are doubly stacked out there. We got some weird things popping off out there let's first go out to the major indices and we're starting to see some paper creep onto the vix tape you know usually a day where we're kind of languishing not doing a heck of a lot vol is coming off those are days that usually aren't recipes for a whole heck of a lot of vix options paper but we're starting to see as this kind of turnaround is is making its way through we're starting to see vol maybe firm up a little bit starting to see a little bit more paper creep into vix land 382,000 contracts on the tape right now that adv has also continued to erode it's down to five hundred seventy-five thousand. though if you have a, a few more days like um, friday and today maybe we shall see that start to tick in the other direction certainly it seems like we're on track and on pace to exceed that adv today spy closing in on four and a quarter million contracts right now the adv right around seven and a quarter so spy well north of half of its adv as well same deal for the s the s about 1.15 million contracts uh, the ADV is about 1.7 million out there. So the S looking pretty robust and the small caps doing some paper. I mean, they are at about almost exactly half of their ADVs. You can't really say they're quiet. They're not perhaps as explosive as some of the other products we're seeing today, but still 396,000 contracts. So closing in on 400 K their ADV is a little bit shy 800 K. So they're right around that halfway point. Remember that ADV has also come in quite a bit since it was well North of a million, not too long ago, about a few weeks ago. Let's see what's going on out there, though. Always my favorite barometer to kind of gauge what's going on, what's afoot in the broad market is looking at the our top 10 most actives. And the starting point for that is to see how much it actually costs you to break into the top 10. And today is no slouch. 234,000 contracts 
that's not nothing. It's not, you're not over 300K like some of these really aggressive rock'em, sock'em robots did. But also, it is not, you know, 182,000 contracts, anything along those lines like we have seen in the past. And what is number 10? It's a recent offender in the top 10. We kind of saw it break in there last week on Thursday. It was actually at an interesting time. You might have thought this name would have broken in earlier given how much upside move we saw in crude oil. But it actually broke into our top 10 in the other direction when crude was starting to sell off. Later in the week, this is Occidental Petroleum, ticker symbol Oxy, back in there at number 10 for 234,000 contracts, as Uncle Mike alluded to. The slippery stuff, getting a little bit of a lift out there again today. Uh, number nine, our friends across the street, Boeing, 246,000 contracts. Chances are when they break into the top 10 again, things are not good <laughs> for them, and that seems to be the case again. Looks like there was a plane crash. I believe it was in China. So uh, not good news for them, but good for almost a quarter of a million contracts. Number eight, it's just another name we haven't seen in here in quite some time since I would say the meme 2.0, the latter stages of the meme rally last year. This is Vinco Ventures, ticker symbol B Big, trading a whopping $2.86, up 38 cents. I'll have to ask a buddy, Mr. Passarelli, coming up later this week on Options Bootcamp if he's been raiding this one. I know this is one of the ones he's had his eye on this one. I know Rocket and a few others. A lot of these. Meme 2.0 names have been pretty popular with him. Looks like it's popular with a lot of folks today. Got up to as high as almost 320, 319 today before coming back off. So quite the pop out here in Vinco Ventures. Let me go number seven, kind of an old school name at this point. This is Facebook, 280,000 contracts at number seven. Number six is Baba. Chinese stocks, they're on again, they're off again, they're on again, they're off again. It's very much... <laughs> Very much a whipsaw market. You'll hurt yourself if you watch it too much. Just listen to oddities and all the, the fun we've had, all the drama around names like EDU. And Baba out here at number six today, 294,000 contracts. Number five, it's a day that ends in Y. Chances are NVIDIA is going to be in there. And today it's at number five. We leap up quite a bit. We go from 294,000 to number six. Number five, 574,000. That's a chasm between six and five there. Number four, our old friend AMD. It almost should just park its flag at number four. It's pretty much always there. Uh, 594,000 contracts. Number three, yes, I said number three, it's Tesla. What is up with Tesla today? Tesla is, let's see, they have only good for 780,000 contracts as well. That's, I mean, that's decent paper for them, but it's not exactly explosive. We've seen them topple Apple pretty easily in the past. Not so much today, even though Apple, excuse me, Tesla up right now, about 11 and a half bucks or one and a quarter percent right around the 917 and a half level or so. Got as high looks like today is 927, actually 937 this morning. So it's had quite the run already and hence a lot of options paper, but only number three, 780,000. What the heck could topple Tesla today? Well, this is a newcomer to the odd block. I do not believe we have seen this in a top 10 in the odd block. This is a newcomer to the top 10 most actives. <laughs> this is Zim, Zim. Integrated shipping services, <laughs> ticker symbol Zim, Z I M, doing a whopping 900. Oh, okay. So this, this seemed odd. And it is, okay. Zim 8574, but they're going X div. That's why this is. So some, I guess they can still play the div game on this one, doing a lot of paper, 916,000. So when you see something like that, listeners, it looks kind of weird, it looks kind of a scant. Chances are it probably is. We haven't talked about a big div play on here in quite some time. Haven't seen one make it into the top 10 in quite some time either. I'm going to assume that's what this one is as well. I haven't had a chance to dig in. Yeah, they're trading a bunch of uh, deep in the money calls. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, that's a div play. If ever there was one, listen, but it's good enough for number two, 900. This is like the old days. And they used to put a lot of paper into these things. Wow. You haven't, it seems like once uh, OCC made a few tweaks, they, these div plays, they didn't go away, but they they dialed down the activity quite a bit. You can't really just do the old wash trades anymore. You kind of have to do some verticals, even though it seems like they're just doing straight up 75 strike plays here, which is N60. So intriguing stuff. Uh, Dip play making into our top 10 today. I haven't seen that in a while. I mean, number one is the fruit company. It's Apple listeners. Good for 996,000 contracts on the tape today. Apple kind of unched on the day right now, right around 164. It's had a range of looks like down to about 163 and a quarter and the upside of 166 and about a quarter. So it's had about a three point range today, but right now kind of hovering unched, but good enough for right around a million contracts uh, in terms of earnings and all that fun. Not a heck of a lot popping off, even though we do still have some names, you know, we're not just because we're outside of 
kind of the cycle proper. We're outside of the the cycle as tracked by Matt and his team over there at ORAS. They really can encapsulate it all in six weeks. We're outside of those six weeks, but there still are some names popping off. Well, you got Nike today, Carnival tomorrow. That's the one a lot of people have been watching for this reopening trade. Uh, General Mills on Wednesday, the meatball's favorite, Darden Restaurants, and a name that is a usually a frequent offender in the top 10, not so much today. That is Neo on Thursday. So still some names to report uh, when we get the latest updated earnings move, earnings move results, earnings season, and earnings trade reports. We'll get those for you over there. Theoptionsinsider.com. Now we've got to go, listeners. It is time to unleash the beast. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's unleash the eye of Sauron, see where it fixes its gaze. First off, Mr. Rocklops, it's been a while since we've seen a div play make it into our top 10. Can you recall the last time we saw one of those put up that kind of number, sir? It's been a while. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think they, they, go, they go up, but I, I, not a top 10 one for sure. Maybe it's just the volume so light, but yeah, we haven't seen that in a while. I mean, it goes closing in on a million contracts. That was nothing to sneeze at, even in the old days when... Div plays were going up pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Even when Philly was like top of the heap every day because they were just putting up nothing but div plays. Even then, a million contracts was nothing to sneeze at. Let's see if we could somehow try to match that here in the odd block listeners as we unleash the beast, look for some unusual activity. First, I do believe, I think, yes, I think this is another trifecta. I do believe these are three newcomers to the odd block today, which is always fun. Some new names to sink our teeth into. First off, Let's go out to Warby Parker. They make all these online eyewear, glasses, all this kind of stuff, listeners. Uh, trading, I'll take your symbol first off, W-R-B-Y. Uh, trading right now, 30 and a half bucks. Let's see what kind of tale we have to tell on this one. This looks like a more a recent addition because we only have data going back to September of last year. IPO SPAC, one of those new additions here to the market at the time it came in it was 54 and about a half bucks so obviously well north of where it is right now this is a story we've heard once or twice before then it kept rallying unlike a lot of the other names that kind of sold off pretty quickly this one rallied for a bit got up to 59 and change in october and then broke the 60 handle looks like a little bit later in november november 17th got up to 60 dollars and 30 cents and that was pretty much it that was the high for the year almost exactly 30 bucks north of where it is right now it's pretty much done naught but sell off ever since then it got down to pretty aggressive low of about 22.59 this was last week on the 14th so it has rebounded aggressively from there as the rest of the market has as well it's gone from 22.59 all the way up to got up to right around 31 bucks Recently on Friday, 3062 right now. So it has popped quite a bit over the last week, even though outside of that, it's been pretty much nothing but downhill for online eyeglass distribution and manufacturing. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron found out here. It looks like Mr. Rock Lobster. Someone has decided that that 52 week low level is a pretty decent level at which to acquire more of said Warby Parker stock. And so they decided to write a pretty decent sized line in the sand down there. 7,790 of the April 22 half puts going up there pretty much not that far off the bid. They got 36 cents, so they actually got a few cents better for doing nearly 8,000 contracts. That's not bad for a name that doesn't do a ton of paper. That's almost a 100 ball. It's about a 98 ball if you are intrigued. The stock was a little bit north, about about 20 cents north of when this went up, but not a huge difference. Let's see. Are there earnings? No. The next earnings announcement looks like it's in May. So this does not appear to be any sort of earnings play. It just seems like someone wants to harvest a little bit of the old risk premium. And also, if they end up picking up the stock, I don't think it's a coincidence that they sold these puts at pretty much exactly the 52-week low. If they end up picking up the stock down there plus 36 cents, I don't think they'll be too uh, angry either there, Mr. Rock Lobster. What say you to our, our newcomer to the odd block, Warby Parker, and some line in the sand puts, sir? Warby Parker. You know what's weird is I every time I... 
I think I've heard of every company and every stock symbol there is after doing this for so long. But I get surprised every once in a while. You're not a hipster in Brooklyn buying the thick rim glasses. That's why you don't know them. I, I, I guess so. I like it. This never heard of this at all. Um, so you're saying this is some kind of this was some sort of oh, Zim was the SPAC. This is just a actual company with some sales. Yes, they actually have products that actually real people do consume and purchase. Yeah. They really consume. All right. Uh, OK. Uh, see. Here. So we're oh, they had some retail stores that 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 that. Uh, huh. Interesting. All right. Um, this does look like a line in the sand type put. Is that what you're you're going with on this one? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence that they sold a bunch of these right at the almost exactly the 52 week low, sir. Yes, I think that's that that does smack of good timing. It, good timing or good judgment or luck or all three. So maybe a little of each. Um, so yeah, this is looking line in the sand and uh as of right now, it looks okay. Stock's 30 bucks, so I think they're going to pay. And I don't hate these either. They're not going out to like next year or something crazy like that. They're just going out a month. Pretty rational, pretty decent level in the stock. All things considered, given how many line in the sand puts we have profiled here. I don't know, 10,000. Uh, <laughs> this one seems pretty rational. I don't hate this one at all. What do you think, listeners? Are you down for these Warby Parker line in the sand puts? We shall make a note to come back to these. And we'll say that the Rock Lobster... Loves them with all of his heart. There we go. All right. So we'll make some notes there. All right. And let's move on to another newcomer. This is Clear Secure Inc. You've probably seen them. They run the those, uh, those you know, TSA kind of uh, pass lanes at the airports. I use the TSA one. I'm not sure why there's a, an, another party company that needs to do it. But, hey, there's Clear out there as well. So maybe you use them. Maybe you have a better experience. I don't know. Uh, ticker symbol U. Y-O-U. So, <laughs> Got good tickers today on the show, if nothing else. Uh, trading right now, $20.40, off about a buck or 4.5% today. So not a good day for you. Let's go back out there and see what the what the tail of the tape is for this one. This is another one. Seems like a, a newer addition to the public marketplace there because they only have data going back to June 30th of last year where they came alive at exactly 40 bucks. So obviously a wee bit higher than they are right now, almost 2x. Uh, they got up to, looks like the high for the year was on August 2nd, 65.70. So they had a nice little pop there for a hot minute. And then it was kind of about it. Unlike our other name, Warby, Warby Parker, they didn't sell off as aggressively. They kind of sold off at a more languid pace. They sold off down to back around their IPO level or their, you know, that $40 level. And they bounced around there for a while. Actually rallied again in November, November 9th, up to about 52 bucks again before they started selling off again. Got down to about 25 in December, hung out there for a while until pretty much last month or so. They started trending down again, down to the $20 level. They actually broke it last week. They got down to their 52-week low of 1879. I don't need to tell you what day that was. March 14th, 52-week low for a lot of names out there last week. We shall see if maybe today's action keeps up and we repeat this. Maybe we'll retest those lows. But for now, those are the 52-week lows for a lot of these names, including everyone's new favorite, you. And let's see what our Eye of Sauron picked up out here in you. Oh, we got a bit of a trend here, Mr. Rock Lobster. Maybe it's, it could be. Let's see. Oh, and you know what? It's the exact same time as the other trade. They both went up at 1024. It's almost the exact same size. The other one was 7790. This is 7650. A little bit less juice, about half. The other one went up for 36 cents. These are 17 and a half cents. But it looks like paper again selling these listeners. Very similar vol level, 96 vol as well the stock was a little bit north it was twenty dollars and 61 cents so maybe they're wearing it a little bit on these but not bad i still have a long way to go and again they're actually sold these puts on the 15 strike so that's almost four bucks below the 52 week low so this is even less aggressive if the other one was aggressive out there it looks like this one unlike our previous name though they do have earnings and the earnings are coming up very soon they're coming up in two days on the 23rd so this one is farther out of the money. He's getting less juice for it, obviously. But also, he has maybe a little bit more substantial chance that something is afoot and these could come to pass. By the way, it's not all line in the sand puts. We did notice about, looks like an hour and a half later, someone coming up. Looks like they scooped uh, the 22 half calls 2,580 times for two bucks even. That's a 101 vol as well. So also pretty juicy. Uh, those went up pretty much lifting the offer there. That's obviously 
about almost exactly $2 out of the money. So we have interesting different takes on bullish paper heading into earnings in your new favorite name, Mr. Rock Lobster, you. What say you, sir, on you? How many times can I say you in one second? I, I, yeah, I know. I was about to say, is, does, it, does it feel a little egotistical to call a stock? I don't know. Is egotistical <laughs> the right word? Maybe Tusak could chime in. But when you call something you. <laughs> You're trying to it's be like having a t-shirt distinctive. that says, I love Maine on it. But instead of, you know, Maine, like I love New York, it's M-E. So I, like what kind of guy would walk on the floor of the SIBO with the, with the acronym devil, right? That's insane. That's something silly. Only a crazy person. You want to be noticed, right? That's what you do. I guess, I guess so. So there were, there were some interesting acronyms. On it. So, um, uh, so, okay, if you look at this, maybe they got 17 cents. Again, one of your favorite, our favorite things is the day you put the trade up, it just is a total, uh, uh, the day you put the trade up, it's already bidding. Piece of garbage, so, yes. Yes, never great, never great. Um, and then, of course, somebody paid two bucks for the calls, and they're a dollar bid at a dollar forty. Yeah, that's an so ouchie. Is, that that's an ouchie right is, there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it feels like there was some kind of news, and somebody just tried to lead the news. And, you know, once usually news comes out, things will look so I don't I do not know if there's any news. It's just it has all the look of, you know, OK, they FOMO'd it in the morning and then they just got, you know, they got run over. By I should mention, by, by the way, I neglected to mention the calls were tied. So they did do stock against it at what is it? Twenty one eighty six. So that makes it look uh, a, little, okay, a little better. Okay. That's so a little better. So yeah. they're, they're they're rolling even. There. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, I could see that as a backspread, and then you sell the 15 puts to cut down the uh, backspread cost by about 50%, thinking it just doesn't go to 15 Went up the other way, though. Went up, sold the puts, and then like an hour and a half later, someone bought those calls. So, yeah. Right. They're, they're not. However, okay, however, if you're putting your tinfoil hat on, this is a – let's see how much Let's see how much volume this does. We don't wear those in downtown Chicago. Only in Maine do you wear the tinfoil hats. Only in Maine. <laughs> so – uh all right so philly they trade the calls with stock and then on the box they put up the puts um all right two different exchanges maybe you know maybe not tinfoil hat time um so one person wants to back spread the trade you know and the other person just wants to sell the puts uh and let's see what's the what's the volume on this name per day uh <laughs> it actually has it's the average vo- <laughs> Okay, if this isn't the same person, uh, I don't know. I will. <laughs> you can take my. So, average daily volume in the name is 500 contracts. So you're telling me somebody <laughs> whacks out the puts <laughs> on one floor, backspreads the 22s and a half, does not and not using those 15 puts to help finance. There's a reason the why we put them both in there. They did. They gave us the whiff of related papers. <laughs> well. Let's just, just the whiff to be watched yes. in the whiff category. Yes, There's definitely. definitely a smell about this. It trip. did not seem entirely coincidental that both would go up within yes. an hour and a half. If we were standing other. in that pit. We would be like, it, let's put it this way. In the old days, it would have been in one pit because this would be a single list. It wouldn't be some stupid multiple list, right? And it probably would be the same broker coming in with the same order. And the customer would think they were being tricky by doing it. <laughs> Except he's using the yep. same account. Same broker walks right in. They're like, okay, what do you stop running yes. us over? Go, go yes. away. Leave us Somebody alone. Like Nemo. Nemo comes. Yes. In. Yes. <laughs> Some might say he might be ousted from the pit, which leads us to our final of three names, all newcomers to the odd block. And we got a couple of cool tickers in here today. We just did you. That's a fun one. Our next one is Ouster Inc. This is an American LiDAR company out of San Fran. Of course, where else would you build LiDAR? Ticker symbol OUST, O-U-S-T. I like that one. <laughs> Trading right now, a whopping $3.76. Man, we got a lot of candidates for our question of the week. We're going to get back to that in a little bit. So three seventy six dollars off about $0.12 cents today on the year. Let's see. Do we have a full year? This one actually goes back a year, so that's nice. It was trading almost, heck, it was trading exactly 10 bucks a year ago. And then it rallied all the way up to about 15. Take a guess which day, listeners. Can you guess? Did you say June 8th? You're correct. $14.99 on ex- this chart is emblematic of everything we've been talking about for the last two years on this show. It goes straight up to June 8th and then right back down again. It's amazing. What majesty, what magic 
lurks on June 8th. I need to commission a study. It is getting out of hand now, the number of names that peak year after year on this same day. All right. I think it's uh, Alan Greenspan's birthday. That must be what it is. All right. So then it sold off hard the next day to 1133. And then it continued its downward trajectory pretty much until last week, listeners. That was the Nader. It was uh, $2.84. Actually, take it back. It was January 28th. It was the Nader. $2.84, $2.84, even though it threatened that level again last week. So it's been hovering around the three buck range pretty much uh, since the start of the year until this past week. Ever since the 14th, it's rallied from three bucks up to where it is right now, $3.76. And Mr. Rock Lobster, it seems like some, ooh, wow. <laughs> they are, they are feeling their oats on this one. Someone is thinking this one's got some upside to go because someone came in this morning and scooped 5,249 of the Jan 2024. So they're going out a ways. 12 half calls. <laughs> they paid a whopping 30 cents for these bad boys. That's a 69 and a half ball. The stock was, oh, five cents higher. <laughs> there are a ton of earnings between now and Jan of 2024. The next one is in May, May 5th. Mr. Rock Lobster. Now this is some... Um, this is some old school meme stock Palooza paper. 12 half calls in Jan 2024, 5,300 times. What say you in my new favorite ticker, Oust? Well, you, you have to admit, though, the if you have to hedge with stock in this one, if you're like, okay, I'm going to put up, you know, 1,000 or 2,000 of these, you're, you're almost good just doing it one to one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, okay. <laughs> okay, stock's $3 and change, and I'm selling the calls. I'm getting almost 10% on the right. Yeah. You know, now 2024, not your um, – and and the, the calls are 30-cent bid coming out probably because uh, – and there was some paper. There is some uh, open interest out there. Um, but uh, kind of a funny one. Uh, so, you know, I – what's it's – well, yeah, and there's still a 30 bid, so you can – Whoever wants these, they still want them, Mark. They're they still, still bid for them. these. Like oh. they'll, they'll take them. And here's oh. the funny thing: a, a trade for oddities? Question mark. <laughs> yes. And you know what else is funny? <laughs> so there, there's a thirty cent bid, and, and okay, just so you can laugh harder, some retail paper paid sixty five for some. Sixty five cents. Yeah. For, Oh my goodness! Lot. So it's paying now. I if I, I sold I, those, I'm buying the stock one to one against them. Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about the person with a mark at thirty? Wow! You know, so now and the last print is forty eight cents. I missed the party today and freak. See, I'm doing all these shows for you folks, listeners. I could have been selling twelve half calls for sixty five cents and oust all day long. See the literal price I paid just to talk. Yeah, sixty three hundred of them went up for sixty five cents. <laughs> No. That offends me on a fundamental level. <laughs> That's like those Dennis and Mine calls. Only those went up two hundred fifty thousand times, but still, wow, wow. You're feeling scarred right now. I think. That I, I'm angry that I missed those on on multiple right. levels out there. Oh no, those are the Jan fives for sixty five. Oh, the the three hundred lot went on the Jan fives. No, those there was the, only uh, there was. Let's see, I saw two trading sixty five. Sorry, two oh. two. Okay, I'll have to dig into that. Meanwhile, it's time to dig into what Uncle Mike has in store for us. Maybe some more pearls of wisdom from Jesse the Body Ventura. Let's find out. It is time for the Strategy Block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the Strategy Block. All right, Mr. Uncle Mike, the people have spoken. They want a full segment today on the wit and wisdom of one Jesse the Body Ventura, sir. Have at it. Go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you want me to do that because I'm not going to stop. I can actually do that for quite a while. Are you sure you want that? <laughs> he was an unheralded heel announcer. I will say that. He was pretty good. Yeah, he was amazing. So, I mean, he was a guy that um, he got really sick and so... He had to take a hiatus from wrestling for a while. And then I guess he got better. He could have come back to wrestling, but he just became such the phenomenal heel announcer with which he was. I mean, he was just amazing with how well he did as an announcer. I mean, the, the man could talk, no doubt about that. 
Um, I mean, even back to his AWA days, uh, to where what he did, um, I think that if he would have stuck around in the sport as a wrestler, he could have rivaled Hulk Hogan even for being, I think those two would have had a 10 year feud. And I think those two would have just been amazing as wrestlers together if they'd have gone at it against each other. Um, but, um, unfortunately he had to go into a fake sport called politics and, uh, that's it. So, uh, but with that being said, um, what I wanted to talk about today on the strategy block is exiting a long option position. I'm just making reference to exiting a long call or a long put. Uh, there's two ways with which I like to do it. Uh, the first way, it's fairly simple. It's kind of an all or nothing type of way in that uh, if I am looking to buy a call option and I want to make a ton of money on it and I really need to have a loose stop loss, meaning I think the stock might go all over the place, well, I like to go with all or nothing, meaning I have no stop loss on my call or my put whatsoever. I manage risk by the size of the position itself because it's a limited risk position. Then I'll limit my risk by the size of the position itself. Typically, I'll do this if I'm buying an out-of-the-money call or an out-of-the-money put. I don't like to do it too often, but the story with which I like to tell where it was really a success for me was in late 2018 where going into December, I was super bullish on the stock market. But I'm like, you know what? I've had a pretty good year this year in my aggressive strategy, but I'm still bullish. What can I do? So what I decided to do is just buy an out-of-the-money call option. So that way, with the option out-of-the-money, I had a limited amount of risk on the table. I didn't put a ton of money into it. I, I protected all of my pro or a vast majority of the profits that I had made going into that month, and I was dead wrong on the market market went straight down at that point. And so that's just an example that I like to use to where you always need to put risk management ahead of market sentiment uh, whenever you're trading or investing for that matter. Uh, let's say that um, I'm looking to exit a position to the upside. Well, of course, in that all or nothing strategy, I, I got to have some type of a plan to where I know that once this option doubles, I'll roll it up and uh, or I will turn it into a spread. Even though I, I don't know if I ever do that, but um, or I will uh, just get out and take profit, whatever the case may be. You have to have a plan of that. Now, the other way with which you can go is you can go the stop loss method or what I like to call the stop loss method. Let's say you spend uh, $3 to buy a call option, whether it's in, at or out of the money. And you know that you want to make a dollar on it. You know that you want to get out of it at $4. Well, what I like to do is I like to have my risk management in place to where if it goes against me to the downside, then I would get out when I lose a dollar on the value of the option. And by doing that, I'll roll in my time stop, meaning if it doesn't move enough for me in enough time and time decay ticks away or an implied volatility stop, in case volatility in that option drops, that's kind of my all-in-one stop based upon the different factors of option pricing. Now, let's say that, you know what, I need a little bit more wiggle room. I can't get out that quickly if it goes against me. You can have a wider stop loss, but understand when doing that, you're going to have to be right more often because if your stop loss is wider than your profit target, you're going to have to have a more frequent, a greater frequency of being correct on the trade. Now, in going the other way with this, let's say I get out quickly, but I let my profit ride. Well, you don't have to be right as much, but you're going to have to have a bigger move in the underlying to make this work. So those are some ways with which I like to get out of option positions, uh, either to the, well, I'm making money or losing money, because uh, both things are going to happen as a trader. And uh, if you're interested in more information on this exact subject, I'm releasing a YouTube video on this exact strategy, uh, hopefully later today. Check out my YouTube channel, St. Charles Wealth Management. Look at you teasing your YouTube. Look at you having a, a coordinated media strategy there. Well done, sir. <laughs> As we go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. Uh, all right, we're kind of coming up against it. Listen, we're going to do a combo Around the Block 
as well as uh, where folks can reach out to you to learn more. By the way, I see we got the Flow Master lurking in there. I did fire up oust in the old trade alert to see what the truth is, what the Rock Lobster, if he was telling me lies or not. And he was not. Someone traded two lots of those Jan 12 halves for 65 cents. It was like an hour and 20 minutes after that big block went up. So, wow, I ugh, I feel for them. That hurts me. It hurts me in my core to see that. But say, Bobby, hey, good for whoever sold that to them. Hopefully some of our listeners got in on that action selling that upside. Just make sure you put something on against it in case this is one of these crazy names that does go to town. And we'll keep an eye on all this fun. By the way, speaking of fun, get on over there to at options if you haven't already. Our question of the week is very much relevant to these names we talked about today. We asked you, you know, some people refuse to trade options on cheap stocks. Are you in that camp or will you trade options on anything? Quite simply, what is your cutoff point? Where the stock becomes a little bit too cheap to trade the options. We said below 15 bucks, below 10 bucks, below 5 bucks, or you have no limits, you're a savage. And right now we have two ties going on. 37.5% each for below 5 bucks and no limits, you're a savage. And then 12.5% each for below 15 and below 10. No votes for below 10 bucks until a few minutes ago, which is weird. Again, just went live a few minutes ago. But I thought that would be the runaway winner. But so far, that's not the case. At options, make your voice heard. Our question of the week. Now let's go back out to the rocking of the lobsters. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what are you watching until we gather here together on Thursday? And if folks want to have more from you in their lives, where should they go? What should they do? Well, if one of my options for this week is, again, we're all, we've got no earnings, got no Fed. we got a lot of Ukraine, or that's pretty much kind of Apparently, sad. there's always Fed. They'll just chime in willy-nilly, right? <laughs> I know. Like, what they just say today, they're like, well, we're just going to, now the inflation's really high, and we're just going to do a half a point. Like, we, we're, like, we're going to do it. We're going to do it big time if we need to. So, you know, into an election year, yeah, I don't believe it. Okay, so anyway, um, <laughs> uh, hopefully the Ukraine thing gets better. Again, all these massive dislocations, I, I, you know, the markets seem to be taking it all in stride. Maybe this, maybe this uh, global supply chain system works and the Russians won't sell it, somebody else will. Who knows? But I do know there is quite a bit of fertilizer and grain to be had out of the Russia-Ukraine uh uh, combo there so and i think believe that feeds a good part of the uh europe between europe and africa so anyway uh let's hope it goes away but that's mostly what i'm watching now i have to say i think this mar- the market is taking this fed news in stride relative so i don't know i'm just saying like when a vault doesn't go up and you think it should go up it's probably going down so it wouldn't surprise me to see a i don't know maybe very low 20s uh, maybe even 20 ball this week. I'm just saying. There you go. When you think ball should go up and it doesn't go up, I probably don't go down. Wise words. You have seen that before. If you want to hear more of those words, optionpit.com is the place to go. And Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until we gather here together on Thursday? And where should folks go if they want to check out your Twitter, your YouTube, all that good stuff? Well, I think oil needs to be watched very closely. Uh, just with the price action as well as the uh, global events that are happening right now. Definitely going to be staring at oil very closely. Also, continuing to watch the 10-year note uh, as it sells off when the Fed says it's going to sell off. So continuing to watch that. Uh, In terms of the S&P 500, uh, we're kind of in the middle, and so I've always... Uh, had said in the past, uh, buy the dump, sell the hump, don't diddle in the middle. And uh, right now we're kind of in the middle. So uh, where I'm at right now, we are still negative on the year. So just selling the far out of the money put spreads and continuing to do that. Uh, In terms of uh, where you can go to learn more information about who I am and what I do, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W. Or you can check out my website, stcharleswealth.com, if you're looking for a financial advisor who uses the option product fairly frequently, if it's appropriate for his clients, of course. And also, you can follow me on YouTube. Just type in St. Charles Wealth Management. Subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you. St. Charles Wealth Management is the place to go for all of that media all in one place. And we got to get on out of here, listeners. But don't worry. We're already running long. But we'll be back in less than an hour now, 55 minutes to break down the madness going on in the world of crypto. Yeah, there's a little bit. 
out there. Is crypto really high beta tech at the end of the day? As some of our guests have alleged of late, we'll get into all that fun stuff. What's going on, the volume, the volatility, the skew, the open interest, all that good stuff, and a whole bunch more coming up. 55 minutes, the crypto rundown. Back again tomorrow, of course, for all you cool secret club kids with the one and only Mr. Scott Nations answering all your ball questions. NASDAQ versus S&P ball, skew or not to skew when looking at a ball product. All sorts of fun stuff. His new book, a whole bunch more coming up tomorrow. Education Wednesday, of course. Options Boot Camp. Dan is back from vacation, so we'll be live back on the network on Wednesday, as well as, of course, OPR, Mr. Overby, a little bit after that. Then back again on Thursday, another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>